the big deuce. <laughs> There's our title. <laughs> to a new world, gods and monsters. <laughs> Not if coronavirus gets me first. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that shit was fucking hilarious. Jason, I love you. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thrill me. Movie. 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 Misfits. 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 All right, ready? Ready. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Movie Misfits. I'm one of your hosts, Crippled Cody, and I am joined, as always, by the one, the only, not John Rhodes just yet, but first, Jason Gray. Jason, say hello. Hello there. Thank you very much, Jason. And next, last but not least, John Spooky, whatever the fuck his nickname is, Rhodes. <laughs> Say oh. hi, John. Hi. <laughs> Did you guys like that? Was that a good reel in? Did I reel it in good? Yeah, good enough, man. Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. Hello, everyone. Oh, I'm fucking ready to do this again. Yes, episode two of Movie Misfits. Jesus, I was so incredibly hard during the first episode, you guys, that I just wanted to come back, and that's come C-U-M, and I just wanted to do another episode with you guys. I want to do 69 episodes at least with you guys on this show. And that's it. Yeah, we're calling it right now, people, 69, and we're done. Unless, we're fucking- unless you want to start paying us, and then we'll do Patreon exclusive. The, the the link to my <clears throat> GoFundMe in the description below. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> Jason, you should make a GoFundMe as well. Uh, I actually have a, a copy page. Oh, okay. Yeah, he does. See, I, I'm I've, going. I've to... donated. Oh, really? Okay. You haven't donated to mine yet, John. I didn't own a house when I donated to Jason. I own a house now. Little got difference. It. I got <laughs> it. I forgot you. Well, um, maybe some of our listeners down the line will give a shit, unlike my two co-hosts. John, what do we have on the show today? Uh, Well, since we're new as a group and not everyone's familiar with us, let's just do a top 10. Top 10s are fun, they're cool, and they'll help people know our kind of taste and whatnot. So we're doing a top 10 of our favorite movies ever. Awesome. That sounds amazing to me. Jason, are you cool with that? I am co- very cool with that. That's oh, thank good. God. I spent I hours feel, of research. I am frosty. <laughs> Did you say you feel crusty? No, frosty. He's, oh. <laughs> he's so cool, he's frosty. Just like Schwarzenegger uh, in that shit Batman movie. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, well, there goes number 10 on my list. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh fuck! So man. who who would we like to go first tonight? I don't give a fuck. Jason, would you like to go first? Go first, yeah, Jason. I'll go first. If no one wants to step up, uh, well, I'm crippled, so I can't step up. So <laughs> bad choice of words. <laughs> Way to be do we want to do uh, any? Do we want to <laughs> do any honorable mentions first? Oh fuck yeah! Let's do honorable mention. Uh, let me see. I don't want to list off all of the honorable mentions, but uh, I'll throw these two out uh, right off the top for my honorable mentions. Uh, Princess Bride and Stardust. Two really great fantasy comedy movies that I enjoy, but didn't quite make the cut for the top ten. I don't know if I know Stardust. Princess Bride, yeah, that's a good movie. Right. Uh, Stardust has uh, Claire Danes in it, um, written by Neil Gaiman. Uh... It's a bit lesser known, but it's kind of in that same fantasy comedy kind of vein. All right, all right, all right. Definitely worth checking out. And since Cody's just kind of pulling this out of his ass, he didn't do any prep work. <laughs> uh, I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll list off my honorable mentions, and I'm not going to limit them like Jason. I've actually got a, uh, let's see here, a five. So this is no particular er- order. Uh, just because they are honorable mentions. So, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's fucking iconic. I mean... Good choice. Yeah. Uh, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings. Or nice. the Ring. 
I, I just love that movie. Uh, out of out of all of those, uh, that one really got me on the whole Lord of the Rings kick. And right. I, I've watched it a lot. So, yeah. Let's see. The Revenant. Uh, I was just fucking blown away by that one. Uh, Twelve Monkeys. I, I, there's not a lot to say. If you haven't seen it, it's fantastic. And, of course, the very last one. Last but not least, Army of Darkness. Simply because I fucking love that movie. And I've seen that movie probably more times than any movie. Period. Uh, there was a point in my life where I watched that movie daily for about a month straight, maybe longer. It was to the point where I was just laying on my couch eating popcorn, saying every Bruce Campbell line along with him in the movie. So, yeah. Those are my honorable mentions. John, you just put Army of Darkness in your honorable mentions, not even in your top ten. That's true, yeah. Dude, we're not last until episode 69, I swear to Christ. (laughs) Wait until you actually get my fucking list, man. Oh, my God. So... Okay, honorable mentions. As you guys have already mentioned, uh, I have not done no prep work for my top ten. I'm going to be pulling them out my crippled ass. Honorable mentions I didn't even fucking think about. So off the top of my head, just a quick couple of honorable mentions. Um, So a little spoiler alert. A couple of my favorite uh, top tens will be from uh, the Resident Evil franchise, movie franchise, and uh, the Hatchet movie franchise. My honorable mentions would probably be uh, Resident Evil uh, Apocalypse, that's the second movie, because it didn't quite live up to what my adult brain wanted it to live up to. You know, it did as a kid, not so much as an adult. Um, And then also, uh, I would say Afterlife, that's part four. Um, Again, unfortunately to me, that one doesn't live up quite as much, but I still like it a lot because, you know, it's part of my favorite franchise. The only other... um, Two honorable mentions would be uh, Hatchet 3 and Victor Crowley. You know, a little spoiler for my top ten, but uh, those two movies, while good, not great. Um, uh, so, yeah. Uh, I really like Hatchet 3. That's that's probably my second favorite out of the franchise. Really? Yeah. Okay. Big fan of that one. Uh, Actually, if, if you guys didn't notice, the shirt I took off uh, before we really got rolling is actually uh, a Hatchet shirt. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so, am I going to start with my top ten maybe first? Or is that not how we're doing this? I guess it goes back to me. Yeah. Okay, you, Jason, do it. All right, just a quick preface on my list. It's kind of, I tried to pick movies that would uh, kind of give a bit more insight into me with each pick instead of a straight top ten list because... I'm not good at lists. (laughs) They're still like my 10 favorite movies, but they're not really, the order is kind of questionable. And there's, I can even say there's better movies I'd pick than some of these. Okay. But anyway, starting with top 10, uh, the number 10, a movie probably no one has heard of the gamers hands of fate. I haven't heard of it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I was expecting that. I'm expecting uh, that with most of your list, just to be like, yeah, I have, I have no idea what the fuck that is. Uh, the Gamers is a movie series uh, mostly funded through Kickstarter by this group. And um, it starts off with their a group of role players, and they uh, kind of dip into the world of the game at times to uh, dramatize that stuff. As the movies go on, the characters in the role-playing game start to realize they're being controlled by people in the real world, and this kind of question of uh, free will, multiverse, all kinds of stuff, it is just shit I live for in movies. It actually sounds intriguing, to be completely honest, and it reminds me of, uh, I can't fucking remember the name of it, but this uh, web series about a guy that got sucked into The Legend of Zelda... Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Legend of Neil, I think it yes, is. Yes, The Legend of Neil. Yeah, it, it, just just you breaking it down kind of reminds me of that, so. Yep. But, uh, yeah, oh yeah, I go next. <laughs> so, my number 10 is Drive. I just, 
there's something about that film that just kind of grabs me. Uh, it's, it's bleak and it's just very character driven, but it's, it's beautifully shot. And I like the story. I, I, I like how realistic they shot all the car chases and all that. And uh, I love cars. I, I don't know if that's really that publicly known, but I absolutely love cars. I used to street race. I actually have drive fast, live free tattooed on my feet. I, I'm, I was a huge car fanatic for a long time in my life. And uh, so that really kind of struck home to me with how realistic it was. And I could really relate to the main character, the driver. So, yeah, just great film. All right. My turn? Number 10? Your turn. All right. Um, for my number 10, and I feel like I'm going to have to categorize this uh, as number 10 just because of how not well received the franchise is in general it would have to be the first resident evil movie i absolutely loved it i didn't even when i watched it for the first time i didn't even think about how oh this isn't anything like the video games and that's probably because i never played the video games i only watched other people play video games so i didn't really care all that much i just love the fact that we had a resident evil movie about an evil corporation who created a virus yada yada zombies it had decent action um and it, in my opinion it had decent pacing unlike the sequels this movie had great pacing so yes my number 10 is the resident evil the first one i i that's to me that's the best one yeah I have which by the way do you know that george romero almost made that movie yes um, and he wanted it because they shopped it around uh, to quite different directors and whatnot. Um, and he wanted to turn it into something complete. See, oh, my God, you guys are going to shit on me for saying this. George Romero always had to have a political statement of some sort behind his movies at, at all times. And while that worked for, you know, Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead and all of those movies, by the time the early 2000s were here, we didn't need a political statement in a zombie movie at that point in time. You know, there wasn't as much controversial stuff going on. I mean, yes, 9-11 just happened, you know, a year before and war was declared, yada, yada. But I just don't think we needed political statements in our zombie movies at that point in time. Take another example, um, which is not in my top 10 or in my honorable mentions, uh, the remake of dawn of the dead 2004 just two years later there was really no political statements in that movie as well um it was just a remake of the setting and some of the characters and some of the events but anyway yes that's a good movie too but yeah yeah <laughs> not good enough to be in my top 10 though no, i agree <laughs> uh jason the way so, that round robin works uh, yep. is it, it, it comes yep, yep. round so so yeah. my number nine is 12 monkeys oh look at that <laughs> i fucking love time travel and there's not really any better time travel movie out there than 12 monkeys Ooh, see i'm gonna have to disagree and we'll discuss that later with my list okay i'm not gonna spoil it i think i might know which one you're talking about and if i'm right i can't really disagree with you we'll have to see yeah <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Bruce Willis, um, Brad Pitt is amazing in the movie, and just the whole aesthetic that Terry Gilliam brings to anything he does is just a blast to watch. Oh, that future world's fucking insane, and you're right, Brad Pitt fucking nails it. I work in a mental institution now, yeah, he is fucking spot on. But yeah, that's about it for that, so your turn. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, comes around, <laughs> that's right. So, uh, yeah, so, vengeance is mine. <laughs> so, number nine for me is Terminator 2. Just love that movie. I, I've always loved it. I remember when we first rented it on VHS, and it's just such a good movie. Um, I kind of put it aside as just as one of those childhood movies that I thought was great, and then it came out on 4K. Eh, whatever. I'll buy it. And I watched it again. It's like, holy fucking shit, this movie is great. So, yeah. Terminator 2. Terminator um, movies yeah. are ones that I hate that I left off my list, but I would lean slightly more towards the original myself. I, and I totally get that. I just rewatched the original a couple weeks ago, and it's a great film. I still put T2 above it. Is that kind of like how a lot of people would put 
um, Nightmare 3 above the first one. They're wrong, but yeah, there, there's a lot of people that, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, my number nine, uh, and this is the last time within the same franchise, would be Resident Evil Retribution. Um, the reason why this, to me, I yes, I know, that's part five. Oh, five. Is, is, yeah, part five. Retribution, um, the reason why I like it so much and better than all the others is because it has an insane amount of video game-like action in it. There's not a goddamn thing about that movie that's redeemable. There's not a <laughs> goddamn thing about this movie that's intelligent. It is just a fucking action romp. Um, and it, it, all the, actually, if there's one thing about this movie that I fucking hate, it's the um, zombie, the Nazi zombie chainsaw effect. Um, literally, they they post production the blood and this chainsaw effect, and it looks fucking terrible. If if you two ever want to see that movie, just that that part is fucking terrible. But yes, <laughs> um, that is my favorite Resident Evil movie. That's the final Resident Evil movie in my countdown. Um, I do place it higher than the original just because of the the action in it. And it's uh, by that point, we all knew what the Resident Evil movies were. They were action movies. They were very paper thin, paper thin plot, not too much character development other than what's needed. And for the formula that Paul Anderson and the rest of the crew that that made those movies for the formula they've been trying to go for the entire franchise, I do think that Retribution nailed it exactly what all of them wanted. So that's my final uh, Resident Evil entry. That's my number nine entry, Resident Evil Retribution. Is, is that the one that takes place in the Arctic? Yes. Okay, okay. At the end, yeah, yeah. And she's... um. She's like caught within the system. Alice is, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did see that one. I I couldn't place it. They just just put fucking numbers and then a subtitle. Come on, it makes it so much easier. <laughs> it's... That would be easy, <laughs> right? Speaking of numbers, my number eight pick is Ex Machina from a couple years ago. That's the uh, time travel movie. No, that's um uh robot movie. Oh, yeah, no. No, I mixed that up with uh uh primer. I don't know why I mixed that up, but I always do that. That's fucking that's weird. That's a weird mix. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I a lot of people know me as a horror guy who loves trash movies, but my true love is science fiction. That's the first thing I go for when I want to watch a movie and Again, it brings up questions of uh, free will and uh, what makes a person a person. So it really great movie for me. All right. Yeah. And like with you, a lot of people know me as the horror guy as well. And with my number eight, it's understandable. Uh, number eight for me is Halloween. The original John Carpenter Halloween, not the fucking H40 2018 fucking abomination halloween it's not an abomination it's an abomination to me that they just called it halloween i wish halloween 18 halloween 2018 something just differentiated a little bit it is a continuation there's no reason for it to have the same fucking title yeah i agree yeah but it's iconic it it is so fucking good and you know before we did the retro for rabbit and red i don't think it would have made my top 10 at all but that experience really just hit home and showed me how fucking amazing of a film it is. And for what John Carpenter had and what he did, it's amazing. It's such a good film. All right. So uh, my number eight, ironically, since we're on the subject of John Carpenter, is actually John Carpenter's The Thing. Stop playing with your... John Carpenter's The Thing, which is... Not nearly as repulsive as the goddamn visual that me and Jason just got here on Skype, you son of a bitch. The Thing, uh, and my number eight, Jesus. Um, you know, that movie was shit on when it first came out. I think it was 1982 when that movie first came out. Um, now it's a cult classic. People fucking love it. Kurt Russell nailed it. He, he hit it out of the ballpark, you know. Even the other actors um, that were in it, Keith David was in it. He did an amazing job. Um, I, I'm a I'm a fan of Keith David because he voiced Spawn in the animated uh, HBO series in the 90s. So much um, better than it, that fucking movie. 
Yeah, well, okay. Yeah. And then, <laughs> that's my uh, number seven. He uh, and then he also did uh, you know, he also played the the devil and uh, Tales from the Hood Part Two, which thank the fuck Christ is not on any of our lists. Um, I hope. <laughs> Shit. Um. So number yeah. Six. <laughs> Yeah, John Carpenter's a thing, like, come on, man, let's be honest, you you two, like, you could put the special effects of that movie up against almost even anything today, and it still rivals it, as far as, yeah, as far as horror special effects. You know, say what you will about how predictable certain, certain aspects of the movie is and whatnot. I think they did it pretty well, and I thought the, the pacing of the movie was pretty good. Um, but yeah, that's my part eight. Uh, excuse me, number eight uh, is John Carpenter's The Thing. It's such a good movie, man. It's such a good yeah. movie. I mean, technically speaking, it's better than Halloween. I just, Halloween's so good in my opinion. It has to be on the list, but god damn, the yeah. thing is amazing. Well, Halloween has a better story. I don't even know and about it, that. <laughs> I can't well, go with that one. I, well, I don't, well, the thing is, it's like, it's realistic, it's down to earth, and it was scary because it could have happened to anyone at right. that point in time. Still to yeah. this day. And I think that's what I mean when I say that, like, it has a a story that people can relate to much more than The Thing does. But, yeah, Yeah. I digress. The Thing is probably the biggest crime to not be anywhere on my list. I regret not having it there. Yeah. Correct it now. There are so many movies out there. I knew I would forget some, and that's the biggest one I've probably forgotten. Uh, But my number seven is Boondock Saints, which... I feel really bad saying that after the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you have been shamed. I, I got nothing to really say about the movie. It's uh, just a fun action comedy movie that speaks to me because I'm from the uh, area. I am kind of ashamed to say that I've never even seen it yet. I didn't even know you were from that area. But yeah, no, I, I really, really like that movie. Uh, it's pretty much a Punisher movie, just not called The Punisher. And with two Punishers. Yeah, yeah. E- even the sequel, I think, is fun. It's not as good, but it's, yeah. it's still good. Um, So, here's where I start to feel a little ashamed. But we're going to come back Dude, around. Dude, I just said Boondock Saints <laughs> after the thing. Well, we're going to come back around to time travel now with my pick for my favorite time travel movie. And that's uh, Back to the Future. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> nope, I can't argue with that. It's that movie is just way too much fun. It's so fun, and if you actually really, really pay attention, it's so meticulously put together. It's just, it's mm-hmm. amazing, and I never, ever get tired of it. Even with the sequels, it's also put together really well. And I highly doubt they had the three movies all planned out before they started filming. Oh no, not at all. It was a scramble, and yeah, I, I thought about putting them in my honorable mentions, but. Eh, the other films, in my opinion, are better. But yeah, I love two and three as well. But number one is yeah. just so fucking good. Yeah. And I, I've i always loved it. And to this day, I'm waiting for Doc Brown to show up in the fucking DeLorean and take me back to the 80s. <laughs> please, please, doctors, take me back to the 80s. John, are you okay? Are you going to be all right, John? <laughs> <laughs> just thinking of a better time, that's all. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're on number seven, right? Jesus. Yep. So, okay, so... And you guys thought your entries for number seven was going to be a little embarrassing, so here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and spin you for a better loop. I My number seven is um, the recently made uh, Wonder Woman. I really liked that movie a lot. Um I am not a fan of live-action superhero movies at all. I haven't been a fan of any of them. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I'm not a fan of any of the recently made ones. I didn't like Justice League. I did not like Batman vs. Superman. Suck my dick if you don't like it, what I'm saying. Well, you're you're Um, talking about the worst of them. Of course you didn't like those ones. Yeah, I was ready (laughs) to fight you on superhero movies, but no, no, keep tearing apart the bad ones. Go ahead. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, no. Um, I didn't like any of those recently uh, somewhat modern uh, superhero movies. Of course, I grew up with, you know, the original Batman. And uh, even though it's not on my list, 
Um, Batman Returns is a fucking amazing movie. It's a standalone film, for Christ's sakes, as well as it is a sequel. It's a, just a great movie. Not on my top ten, but it's still a great movie. However, I really liked Wonder Woman. I think because my expectations were so fucking low when I went <laughs> into watch it. it. It works so well. I love origin stories. And that's what this basically was, is an origin story of, of Diana. And um, it had good humor in it. And yes, there was a lot of action, but I cared about the characters. I cared about the story. It just, it was so much fucking fun. Um, and I don't think, I didn't feel like it went off the deep end, like Justice League and Batman vs. Superman did. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about number seven, it, it, Wonder Woman. It's a fucking curveball for sure in this list, but it is one of my favorites. I can't pick anything apart. It's a, it's actually one of the best DC movies ever made, yeah. and it's it's fucking good. Absolutely. Yeah. I could go on for an entire episode just on where the DC movie franchise has gone wrong, but I have almost no complaints with Wonder Woman. Right. The only right. thing I could say about Wonder Woman is, is the third act with the, yep. the fight. It just feels almost like a video game cutscene. I'm not saying that uh -huh. It's a bad thing. I'm just saying it, it almost feels out of place with the rest of the movie, but I, it's still good. I agree. I agree with you on that, and that's because the first half of the whole entire film was almost flawless. Yeah. That yeah, like by the time the movie's almost over, your expectations are so unrealistic that <laughs> yes, unfortunately, that ending does have to fall just a tad bit short. But it wasn't insulting. It, it, you know what I mean? When it was over, it was like, hey, that was a fucking good movie. You know. So yep, it's my pick. All right. Well, for my number six movie, there could be only one choice: Highlander. Oh. I fucking I forgot about it. I adore this movie. It was one of the first movies I remember seeing on VHS. I love Christopher Lambert. I love Sean Connery absolutely refusing to do any sort of Spanish accent. <laughs> the sword fighting is pretty decent for the time. What do I even have to say about an entire uh, soundtrack by Queen? It just had a really fun, unique action movie, and that's my number six. Fuck. I kind of want to go watch highlander now god damn it you sold me but i'm not even gonna really get too in depth with my number six because i know we're gonna be coming back around to this one um my number six is the crow and am i right and we're coming back around to this one it, it might make a return appearance yeah it I, might come back from the dead i assume and it's probably going to be an in-depth conversation so uh, I'm just going to leave it right there as uh, it's my number six, The Crow. <sighs> well, my number one pick was going to be City of Goddamn Angels, but forget it now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I like that one. Everyone fucking hates on that one, but I think it's good. Yeah, I thought it was good, too. Not in my top ten, though. Um, number six, right? We are on number six. So That's how math works. My number Huh? That's how math works. I mean, you oh, go from thank you. seven I... down to six. and I'm so sorry. I, I had a handicap moment. Will you forgive me? Hey, I'm dyslexic <laughs> as fuck, so when we're talking about numbers and shit, we're into my handicap. We're not talking about <laughs> racing or anything like that. <laughs> anyway, my number six is a, is a very, very unknown low-budget horror film. It's called Drive Through. I don't know if anyone has ever heard it. It is a nightmare and elm street knockoff so to speak um it had the typical you know this guy was accused of something he was burned to death and he came back and um it's kind of comedy-esque it came out in 2006 um and he he's, he just wears like a clown mask and he has a hatchet so you know all the juggalos probably like that movie i'm not a juggalo by the way the list the, our listeners can still respect me i'm not a juggalo but um what's with the face paint then yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, drive through just it's a low budget random horror movie from the mid two thousands. I rented it back when I first got Netflix in the in like two thousand and ten. Uh, and it has a really good soundtrack, decent kills in it, and even though it's one hundred percent predictable and nothing original, it, it they do the story uh well and they, they the execution as well for a low budget film. Um anyone out there who's listening who hasn't seen Drive Through, uh go check that one out. It's 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 decent for a low budget horror movie. 
I'm aware of it. I've seen it uh, staring at me, I think, from Amazon Prime lately, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. It's really I, one I've been trying to remember to get around to. Dude, I promise you, it is not... It's not as forgettable and as terrible as all the other ones uh, that are B movies that with no, you know what I mean, with no hype around it. It's it's decent, I promise. Mm-hmm. If you watch it, we'll talk about it maybe on a couple of episodes down the line. <laughs> oh, I can just imagine there's going to be a Trisk all about it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Jason, what is your uh, Bringing up to number five is Dark City. Wait, no, no, my counting was right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking no- Dark City. Hell yeah, man. That's that's a good movie. Um, I think I've only seen that once or twice. And correct me if I'm wrong, but there, like within a couple years, there's been a new cut that came out, right? Uh, yeah. There was a director's cut in the mid 2000s somewhere. Okay, that's what I'm thinking of then. I'm getting older, so you know, mid 2000s. That was just a couple years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I said 2008 was a few years ago to someone, so. (laughs) Um, Well, out of those, which is the preferred cut? Because I heard the director's cut actually changes a few things. Ah, it's been a while since I've watched either, but I think I still lean towards the original. I'd have to give it a check to really refresh my memory. But I don't have any major problems with the director's cut that I can recall. Okay, all right. That's always strange and stands out to me to hear when somebody prefers a theatrical over the directors. And uh, oh. I, the biggest one with me is Donnie Darko. Uh, I really prefer the theatrical over the director's cut. It just goes too far, I think. I uh, lean a little bit more still towards the theatrical on that, just because the director's cut kind of gets a bit too much up its own ass at times right and it and it explains and takes away some of the mystique too so yeah which damn that should have been one of my honorable mentions but anyway yeah same here yeah dark city great movie still still want to see highlander though so anyway uh my number five um insert obnoxious video game noise oh fuck i'm the editor what are you doing getting a life I probably won't do that. But number five for me is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I fucking love this movie. And I recently rewatched it again for probably about the 20th time. And I still relate to Scott. And I really want to see a sequel. Because, you know... At that time, when it was first coming out, I was around Scott's age. I was a little bit older, but I'm immature, so, you know, I could relate. I, I want to see a sequel now where they're in their fucking 30s. I want to know what's going on with Scott. Is he stuck in a boring-ass job and a mundane life like me? <laughs> Is that all you have to say about it? Fuck yeah, man. I, it's a great movie. I love it. I've seen it a lot. Uh, I quote it in my everyday life. Um, I, I There are quotes in our first episode there'll be quotes and probably in this episode i'll probably just recycle in all honesty but uh i yeah i i love that movie um it's so good i love all the little video game references and just how they mesh this video game world with reality but the characters are so fucking relatable so fucking relatable like i could point out friends that i've had that are like the people in this movie and i related to scott a hell of a lot hmm so real quick before we get into my number five, is it because I've never seen that? Is it is it based around a video game world or something? It's based off from a comic book series, um, and it, it's kind of like if characters in video games, you, you're seeing almost like the the side characters, like the the people that just have the mundane lives in the world. Like, it's not super video gamey, but the the whole overall story is that Scott has to fight his girlfriend's uh, seven evil exes, and <laughs> every time he beats one of them, they explode into coins and stuff like that, so. Wow. It's it's just really well done. It's cool. It's funny as hell. I mean, it's, it's oh, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you see it. I've heard good things about it. I, yeah, but I haven't seen it. Maybe I'll definitely have to check it out one of these days. 
the best way I could describe it, and this is coming from a person who does not like the movie. <gasps> uh, yeah. Fuck, did you just say, Jason? <laughs> I do not like Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I, can't, I, I do not like it. Wow. Um, I, mm. I saw it for the first time two years ago, and I think I was just not the right age to see it at that point. Um, but anyway, a good description for it is a love letter to video game culture. Yeah. Interesting. So, just being curious, what don't you like about it? A lot of the uh, aesthetic of the whole video game stuff popping up all over the place just really gets tiresome for me at some point. And I'm really not a fan of the character of Scott in that movie. Oh, shit. So, wow. That's kind of an insult then because I relate a lot to Scott. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, just leaving it at well, yeah. All right. Well, we'll just. I, I hate to tell you, John, but I can't relate it all to you either. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, going uh, moving on to my uh, number five, and it. Yeah, thank you, John. I know what number we're at now, buddy. Um, <laughs> and people are gonna think that we like practiced this shit ahead of time, but I swear to Christ, we did not. My number five is actually the original Mortal Kombat movie. It came out in 1995. Okay. I I adore this movie. Um, I it, like. I don't. I think I was struggling in my head for the last few minutes, like where to put this movie on the top five, on the top ten. But I figured, fuck it, we'll put it at number five. Um, it it's one of those video game movies that does not. It doesn't go so far into the mythologies and the silliness and the cheesiness of the video game property that it's about to the point where it makes people shake their heads. And today, it, the only thing that's cheesy about it is the digital uh, effects in the movie. It's very, very outdated, the digital effects. But you'll have that in, in any like movie that's 20, 25 years old. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know what to say about this movie. It, it does a great job on developing characters uh quick enough to where you know and then after what 20 25 minutes of the movie then boom you're thrusted into all of the action and it feels like once it starts it does not let up not in the way that you feel like you're out of breath by the end of the movie in a bad way but it's it, it's so exhilarating and fun to watch and believe it or not looking back on it i'm actually glad it was a pg-13 movie because i I could go see it as a kid and um to still to this day i can show anybody it i got a lot of friends who has kids so i can show everyone's kids that movie so yeah my number five is mortal kombat 1995 the original i i actually saw that in theaters (laughs) what's your opinion on that real quick you like it uh, it's fun. It's kind of cheesy, but it it's definitely yeah. fun. I don't think it's aged that well, but it's still a fun movie. Um, I'm actually a little curious. What are your thoughts on the upcoming remake of it with, uh, uh, I think it's James Wan that's making that. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> and it's really funny because again, I'm not a big fan of live action superhero stuff, but one of my favorite shows on TV is Supergirl and the guy <laughs> who plays, the guy who plays James Olsen, I believe, he's playing uh, Jax, I, I think. He, he's yeah, that playing, sounds right. Yeah, he's playing someone in the new movie. I think it is Jax. Um, and I'm excited about that because I think he's a great actor. And uh, But yes, I, I'm i really scared that I'll <laughs> go into the new movie. I, I, that I'll go into the new movie and compare it right off the bat to the original. And I, God damn it, if I do that, I'm not going to enjoy it. No. I have to go into that shit and and just completely wipe my mind of what I already have a standard in my mind for for a Mortal Kombat movie. Uh, so as long as I can do that, um, I think it's going to be an enjoyable film. It's going to be a hard R rated film, so it's going to be a lot different. It's not going to be classy. There's going to be spine rips probably and a lot of fatalities and fuck knows what else. Um, before we go on to Jason with his number four, I got to ask – did you see it was about 10 years ago but a random fan made uh Mortal Kombat short showed up on YouTube and it was R rated and it just showed a bunch of graphic shit right off the bat. Anyone seen that shit about a decade ago? Uh was that the one that had a couple uh actual actors in it? Yes. 
Yeah, because I know like uh, Jerry Ryan from Star Trek Voyager was in that one. Yeah. Yeah. And it okay. Yeah, so I saw some well, of that. Yeah, it was so well produced, and I, it's actually what kicked off um, because then Machinima, I think the the, the website was Machinima yep. made um, their own uh short form mortal Kombat series what was that called it wasn't called mythologies because that's the crappy n64 game but it, it had a subtitle to it and it was just basically about the origins of all of the mortal Kombat characters but that's what started that so yeah um i'm hoping that the new movie will be something like that jason and both those by the way i think were fucking great i love both of them that that short and the series okay so you have seen the short oh yeah i've seen both okay Okay, yeah. Um, I it was that's so you asked if you know about the new movie. That's I'm hoping it's in that vein of of that short because that short was fucking great. Uh, <laughs> my number four is a little movie called Falling Down. Oh, okay. It's uh, a movie I saw probably when it came out on videotape. Um, and it just kind of hit me at just that right time that. Sort of counterculture, um, down with authority, anarchy type of thing that has stuck with me since I've seen it. And it's just a movie I come back to a lot. I've only it seen that once. It doesn't quite play as well these days, but it still <laughs> holds up very well, even with a lot of the changes in culture we've had. A lot of the stuff it has to say still works, and it isn't. there isn't a lot in it that is offensive nowadays. There's a few things, but it stays pretty much playable these days all right yeah i i should revisit that one i've only seen it once and i i do remember enjoying it but i i think i was just too young when i saw it to really relate to mm -hmm. how fucking just true it is to be honest John. you're up um ladies and gentlemen while john needs his two seconds i crippled cody will entertain you just for two seconds and i think john is now back john are you back with us now i am i am sorry i was uh i was delivered a message has nothing to do with oh. any of this <laughs> but my okay. number four is are we all assembled for this yep it's the avengers the original fucking amazing culmination that i honestly never thought would actually happen or work and uh it's it's just so good i i've seen it a bunch of times i started a whole show and the only episode ever released of the podcast was dedicated to it um i'm not afraid to admit i i kind of tear up a little bit in certain parts it's just i love it and it, it is you know led to this whole universe that i am dedicated to i follow religiously and yeah it's it's the beginning and it's one of the best I, I mean comparing it obviously yes you know infinity war and endgame are better but this one just holds a special place in my heart because i never expected it to work i never expected it to happen and it does it, it does it really does and uh on top of the john carpenter oversight the second biggest oversight on my list is there is not a single Marvel movie on here, and that is a shame for me. That is. Honorable mention to Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> You're too late on that, buddy. Yeah, we, we've moved on. <laughs> Never too late. Yeah. Well, number four for me, and again, I swear to God, I'm not just trying to follow your lead, John, but there is... One superhero movie that I will go out of my way to show all of my friends, and I because I think it's top tier. Um, I'm a big fan of animation. I'm not sure if I said that yet on this show. My favorite superhero movie, and my number one for my number four pick is uh, Batman Under the Red Hood. Oh, I've seen I've that either. one. Mm hmm. It is such a powerful goddamn movie. And again, it's a little predictable on certain aspects throughout some of it. But the execution of that movie is so well done. Uh, the Joker is brutal in that movie. And, you know, and I was thinking earlier, because I, like, I love a lot of the superhero uh, DC animated universe movies. I, I really like, uh, you know, The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, Mask of the Phantasm is, you know, another one that people love. But for me, it was always Under the Red Hood. 
Um, I don't know what it was about that one. That one just clicked with me. Uh, it could have been a little bit longer because, you know, nowadays DC animated movies are not afraid to go a little longer and also not afraid to be rated R. But the time that that movie came out, uh, it was PG-13, but PG-13 violence can go further than uh, ra- live action movie violence. It's a great film. It, it, it's 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 about betrayal. It's about loyalty. It, Batman's human side gets tested. Great fucking movie. If if no one has seen Under the Red Hood yet, that is my number four. Good pick. I've heard good things about it. Yep. Oh, I'm actually a little shocked. I I, I expected you to have seen that, Jason. Uh, I have not seen a lot of the DC animated movies. Just haven't gotten around to it. No, okay. I'm ashamed. Yeah, I'm ashamed I, I, of you. I did see the uh, Death and Return of Superman movies they did uh, last year. Oh, okay. Oh, fuck. I still haven't seen those ones. Fuck me. The the Dark Knight movie that they did, part one and two, uh, that's mm-hmm. really good, too. That's I yeah. really like that one. And the only reason I couldn't put that on my, my top ten list is because the pacing is weird. Um, there's supposed to be one movie... I don't even count that as part one and two. It's just one Dark Knight yeah. Returns. But when you do watch it all together, it is a little weird paced. So, because to me, it was down to those two Under the Red Hood or Dark Knight Returns. I picked Under the Red Hood. Okay, fair enough. Jason! Yep. My number three pick is. Now, I explained earlier how a lot of these picks were more for illustrating the different uh, aspects of my interests, and that's none more true with this movie because my number three pick is kind of my placeholder for my love of really bad garbage movies, (laughs) and it is Winter Beast. Oh my god. The movie is an absolute disaster. It is bad in almost every conceivable way possible. A movie could be bad, and I love it. If I'm ever feeling down, I just throw it in and laugh for the next 90 minutes that is that is the definition of trash cinema right there man (laughs) it was a toss-up either winter beast or demon wind those two movies are kind of like like neck and neck for me Ugh, demon wind i still haven't seen demon wind it's a waste (laughs) sorry jason just kind of (laughs) is it is an absolute batshit movie (laughs) Well, speaking of batshit movies, I, I actually watched uh, Ghoulies for the first time last night, Ooh. and uh, wasted premise. Anyway, uh, my number three is not a wasted premise because it is—it's obviously great. It's my number three. It defines me a lot. I still remember the day we went to the video store and rented it, um, and well, I should actually say the title of it. It's the Monster Squad. Ooh. I I fucking love this movie. Um, I I didn't want to rent it, but the video store back then had a uh, deal where it was uh, f- five movies for five dollars for five days, and it was right around Halloween. It was trick or treat season, and I was too old to go trick or treating, so we were renting movies at that point. I had four, and I couldn't find the fifth. And I just ended up grabbing that. I felt a little ashamed because I thought it was going to be a little too kidsy for me. But I fucking loved it. And it became a rotation for me. Um, I own it on uh, VHS, DVD, and now the exclusive fucking Blu-ray that was so limited and hard to get. Oh, I'm so glad some collector out there died and whoever was selling it didn't know how much it was worth. Oh. Those things go for like fucking 60 bucks and I got mine for 13 so, yeah, uh, but it's all the monsters together and just this group of 80s kids that has to, you know, do what 80s kids movies do. They, they best them and come together and it, it's it is so good. And I don't give a fuck. I cry every time at the end of that movie. And oh, it's 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 iconic to me. Well, yeah, it's a decent movie. Uh, I saw it when it came out same thing uh, with the video store and didn't get back to revisiting it until a couple years ago and it holds up it's a great uh family horror movie is a great way to put it it doesn't really go all the way for towards something like um nightmare on elm street but it really is something that everyone can sit down and enjoy and get a few laughs a few scares and stuff like that 
Yeah, but it doesn't really hold back that much either. I mean, Dracula's yeah. calling this three-year-old a bitch, and then Horus is shooting down the Gill Man, and you're getting blood. And, you know, Rudy's fucking staking uh, vampire bitches in the street. So it doesn't hold back that much. And, yeah. yes, that was all straight from fucking memory. That's how well I know this fucking movie. I know Fat Kid's name. Yeah, I um I did see Monster Squad all the way back in the Fearnet days. Uh, <laughs> they aired it on there. I you know, I wasn't bothered by it. I at that point I was not looking for family horror. I was looking for deep, dark, and brutal, violent you know right. horror movies. But uh, for what it was, it was entertaining. So uh, I'd probably put it at number thirteen and not number three. But <laughs> <clears throat> that's. <laughs> I think a lot of it is it, it just ties into nostalgia for me and yeah. it's just I love 80s movies like this there's just it's just something about it that just speaks to me I, I fucking love it so yeah all right so number three for me and I'm really glad that you said 80s movies John because I have to put in somewhere in my top ten that uh, what another subgenre of movies that I really really love and that is buddy cop movies, and I was thinking like which buddy cop movie is my personal favorite and I have to go with the original Beverly Hills Cop. Um, that movie, I I can't like that's one of those movies that doesn't have to be horror for me to just put over all day long to someone like if you're gonna ever watch. A buddy cop movie make it beverly hills cop the original or maybe part two don't even talk about part three i will fucking quit this show if you talk about beverly hills cop three but there's the, gonna be the, a four. Oh yeah yeah netflix is supposed to do a part four i heard yeah. unfortunately i think eddie murphy's a little past his prime uh comedic wise and that's unfortunate because he was he was great you know, he, he was great in a lot of other things that aren't on my top ten, but uh, Beverly Hills Cop is. And, uh, you know, that's it's a movie where you feel for the fucking characters. And it doesn't have CGI. It just has good acting and a couple of good shootout scenes and, you know, good villain. You know, you, you fucking hated that villain. And uh, I don't know. Like, I, I don't think for me it was just nostalgia either because I – Definitely have revisited a lot of these movies um, as an adult within the past 10 years. And uh, I love Beverly Hills Cop. And it what start, it's what started my love for bu- buddy cop movies in general. I just recently watched Bad Boys for Life, and it was a fucking fantastic film. <laughs> so, yeah, make fun of me if you want. But I, the Bad Boys movies are great, and a lot of the other uh, you know buddy cop movies are great. I wanted to put... God damn it, I, I should have put it in my honorable mentions of uh, Running Scared. It was a Beverly Hills Cop spinoff. It had uh, B- Billy Crystal uh, in it. And uh, not quite well done as Beverly Hills Cop, but it was still a good honorable mention. But yep, Beverly Hills Cop is my number three. I don't know what else to say about it. Anybody who hasn't seen it yet, go watch it for the love of God. It is a fucking great action 1980s movie. Oh, it's a good movie. I, I I loved it back then, and it's been a while since I have seen it, but uh, another one that I, I would put out there is uh, 48 Hours. That's a, a great one, too, and Eddie Murphy's in that one, too. So Of course, and you know, and I, I did see 48 Hours, and then the second one's called Another 48 yeah. Hours. He He's not having quite as much fun in those movies as he is uh, in Beverly Hills Cop. Which came first? Uh, I think 48 Hours came first. Did it come first? That makes sense because, so. yeah, he just again like the whole time I was watching both those movies, it's like man, like you're you you don't feel as comfortable in this type of role, Eddie Murphy, as you do in Beverly Hills Cop. So, but yeah, you're right. Forty eight hours is a decent movie. Ah, so comes back to me with number two and probably my top science fiction movie of all time has to be Blade Runner. Oh, okay. Again, what's there to say about Blade Runner? Harrison Ford running through a gritty 2019, which we never actually saw. (laughs) Amazing performance by Rutger Hauer. Yeah. And again, uh, that whole question of what makes a person a person. Uh, You're going to hate me for this, but I actually like the sequel better. No, that's fair. I really enjoyed the sequel. I got nothing. Blade Runner is a good movie. I, I just... There's something about that sequel that 
just got more into me, my psyche, and yeah. just, yeah, I don't know. It, it spoke to me more. That's that's what I was trying to say. No, no, it's a really good uh, sequel. All right, so then it comes to me, and uh, my number two is a fucking masterpiece. Um, on anyone else's list, I could easily see it being number one. It's Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Because, I mean, it's it's so well done. It is oozing fucking atmosphere, and the score is fantastic, and Jack Nicholson is phenomenal. It's just everyone's so good in that movie, and it is so fucking creepy. It, there's not one fucking thing I can say is bad about that film. It is good on so many fucking levels. Not even as, yeah. like, a horror film. As any film is fucking fantastic right i think the most interesting part of uh the shining is the 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 slow deterioration you get of jack nicholson's character oh yeah absolutely i mean i'm from from frame one we're seeing that he's he's on a downward slope and i i just love it i I love the character work and, and just where it goes it's it's so good no there's really uh no complaints there with it it's a fantastic movie. I'm a little less on the side of it being a great adaptation. I'm a little bit with Stephen King on that one. Not quite as much as he is, but I can't complain with it as a piece of fiction in its own right. No, it is is not a good adaptation, but it's just such a great story. And and yeah. we now have a great follow-up with Dr. Sleep. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so... You know what? Out of all these, number two is the difficult one for me because I won't spoil it ahead of time. But John, you know what my number one is, obviously. And uh, number two, a lot of people would think number two would be um, the original Ghostbusters for me, and which I love that movie and I fucking love that franchise so much. But number two for me is happens to be the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie from oh, 1990. Shit. Yes, and I'll tell you why. God, and it's like, I have a Ghostbusters tattoo. I fucking, like, I love that franchise as a whole more than anything else. But it is more so the cartoon series, the real Ghostbusters, that I love more than anything. So just in case anyone listens to this and like, well, Cody, you like Ghostbusters the most? No, shut up. I only like the cartoon series the most. Shut up. <laughs> so anyway, um, Ninja Turtles, the 1990, it was my favorite as a kid. It was my favorite as a teenager. And it's definitely my favorite as... um as an adult when it comes to movies on comic book uh, properties you know you get you get these newer ninja turtles movies and they're so over the top schlocky you know they're they're so cheesy and it's a lot of stuff that kids would enjoy but the 1990 movie man like that movie was so well balanced kids could enjoy it but adults can enjoy it like just a couple of years ago i showed one of my friends uh, she's around my age, and she never watched the original. She's just used to the the remake and then the sequel that came out within these last seven or eight years. Um, and she loved it. And that's what she said. She's like, man, this is way better than the, you know, the CGI Ninja Turtles. Like, why would you want to see monster-esque you know, Ninja Turtles, digital turtles like that when you can see guys in suits doing karate moves? It's just way better. <laughs> um, the character development in the... Uh, 1990 TMNT is so fucking good. Like, you just, you care what happens to all of them. Splinter is so humanized in that movie. I don't know how they fuck that up with all these sequels and remakes and reboots. And, you know, you got all of the personalities and all the turtles that you remember from the cartoon series, but it's not so overdone to where it's annoying. You know, Michelangelo does a lot of silly shit, but not shit that you would shake your head out. It's not WWE style is is what I'm saying. You know, it's not that fucked up, but, um, it's silly shit that you would expect from a teenager. Right. Right. But like, everything seems like it has a point to it. And there's just this aspect of sons and, and their father that they want to protect and, and save at the end of the film. Oh my God. And don't even get me started on that scene where they're crowded around the fire and, and (laughs) and Splinter says goodbye to them. I'm almost getting teared up just thinking about that scene because it's so <laughs> fucking well done. So, um, yeah, my, that's my number two pick, TMNT 1990. 
Um, I what you guys have any other thoughts on that before we move on? Uh, no, I'm, that's a great movie. Another one I saw in is. theaters. Um, I haven't revisited it since I was a child, but man, your passion sold me. I I want to check that one out again. Oh my god, the emotion in that movie, man! I'm t- <laughs> like me and my friend when we watched it just a couple of years ago. We both were crying during that fucking fire scene, the meditation scene. You know that? Oh my god, it's it's they that that movie's lightning in a bottle. You cannot make you cannot ever make a better Ninja Turtles movie than that movie. So yeah, that's my number two. So that brings us to our number one picks, but we're going to hold you in suspense for a little bit and take a short break. Hold your cocks, everyone. We'll be right back. Yeah, I I need to get something to drink. I'm literally dripping sweat. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. (laughs) Anyone actually need a break? I'm going to go pee due to boredom. I have to pee. I made a new song, you guys, for my penis. Do you want to hear it? Do we have to? <laughs> Just say yes, Jason. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, as long as it's not too long. No, 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 no. It's just, it's real quick, real quick. Um, I think you I made a at, joke there. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it would be oh, representative it. if it was too long. Shit, I understand now. God damn, another handicap moment. So um, I look at someone real awkward-like, right? And I grab my dick with my crippled little shovel hand. And I, it goes like this. This is my penis. It is very small. This is my penis. My penis's name is Paul. Small Paul. That's my penis name. <laughs> I, I think we have our new outro song. Yes. Oh, I'm fucking using that at some point. You definitely can use that. <laughs> yep. Small paw. But you know what? Uh, having a small penis, it's much easier to get deep-throated by bitches. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> welcome back to Movie Misfits. As you remember, I'm Crippled Cody, joined by Jason Gray and Hi. John Rhodes. <laughs> welcome back, guys. Hey, hey. Yeah, I took my break to uh, refuel. So, yeah. Oh, I love the... You're drinking Mountain Dew? Uh, It's so fucking hot in here. (laughs) Oh, my God. Can we get Mountain Dew to sponsor us, you guys? Oh, Oh, amazing. Oh, fuck. If only. Yeah, that's that's (laughs) why I'm actually shirtless. Like I said, it's like fucking 90 degrees in here. I was dripping sweat. And when I sat back down in my chair... Nice and sweaty and slimy and soaking wet. Fuck yeah. You guys don't know it, but I'm pantsless. <laughs> Not really. I, I don't want to excite any of our listeners. So anyway, guys, we are at number one in our top ten list. Oh, we're finally there. We're at the pinnacle. And since we're here, and I've already said mine on the previous show, I'm just going to go first. Uh... My right. number one is The Evil Dead. The original Evil Dead. Um, I absolutely love that movie. Sure, there are a shit ton of flaws. I freely admit that. But just the passion in that. I mean, you can feel it just watching it. The passion that's that was put into yeah. it. Um, and yep. and all the, the, the fucking interesting little camera angles and all the techniques and... It's so good, um, and I love it. I I've seen that film so many times. Uh, I watch it routinely. That is my Halloween tradition that has not been broken in over a decade, uh, longer than that, probably two decades now. Fuck, I'm getting old. But anyway, um, ah, I, I've seen. I it. did see you limping. I did see you limping coming back in the room. Yeah, it, uh, it's, it's happening, man. It, it's it's what happens when our bodies get old. We die a little <laughs> each day, but uh. Yeah. uh you know, I, I've seen it in theaters. I've I've seen it in the the fucking drive-in. I, I've owned all kinds of editions of it. I, I never get tired of it ever. Uh, I've shown so many people this movie. Uh, granted, more than half of them have walked out, but still, it's it's great. I love it. I mean, I have tattoos. I, I've met Bruce Campbell. I have signatures. I have collectibles. I 
I have so much. It is my favorite film. There's nothing more I can say. Now, you say people have walked out. Is that because out of uh, they got grossed out or because of boredom or what? Uh, usually the tree rape scene is where I lose a lot of people. Um, huh. Past that, uh, uh, a little bit with the gross out, I think. Um, some people just don't like the fucking movie at all. My, my wife is okay. not really a fan, but she's kind of grown to kind of appreciate. I think she appreciates it out of how much I love it. So... Interesting. It's funny because, oh. like, I'll be watching it and and I allow myself to get absorbed into it. Granted, I've seen it so many times, I could tell you probably verbatim what happens, but I'll allow myself to get absorbed and I'll jump. I'll still jump watching it now, and she laughs. You know, I think that's kind of the fun for her. She knows it. She thinks it's fucking stupid, but she gets enjoyment out of seeing how much I enjoy it, which is cool. So, yeah. Um, I actually have a couple of friends that uh, are aware of the original Evil Dead, but won't watch it because of how intense they know it gets by uh, the end of it. I mean, yeah. the fucking dismemberment. How could they lose that with the remake? I, uh, the the scene where they chop up the girl with the axe, fucking iconic, and all the body parts twitching. It's, oh, it's so yeah. good. So and just good. like we mentioned in episode one, nothing beats claymation. But uh, I mentioned somewhere else, clay, nothing ever beats claymation. CGI, if it's done right, it's okay. Claymation is where it's at. Oh, that death at the very end where the Kondarian demons are ripping out of their skin suits of the people. Oh, it's so fucking brutal and good. All right. Yeah, good choice for number one. Jason, I will not go next. You go next. All right. My choice for number one is The Notebook. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, no, what? it's the crow. It's the crow. Serious? Like, oh my god, I was trying not to judge, but what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I like how you got us both because I, I totally knew where this was going, and then you said that with such conviction. I was just like, no, he's fucking with us. Wait, maybe? It, it, maybe? <laughs> it, and it doesn't help that we can't see his fucking face right now. So, like, I. <laughs> I don't know Jason like you know him, so I thought, really? Like, number one is the notebook? Like, what the f- <laughs> anyway. Uh, I mean, good. Um, I mean, Ryan Gosling is gorgeous, but come on, man. I, he Rachel is McAdams in that one, is right? one of my favorite actresses, but no, no, we're not going down this road. <laughs> no, no, no. It's The Crow. <laughs> I saw The Crow uh, when it came out in theaters after uh, everything it went through to get there. And I just immediately fell in love with this movie. I know it's not a great movie. I know it's campy as hell at times. But Brandon Lee gives one hell of a performance. Ernie Hudson is fantastic in it. And I love how it embraces this kind of grittier, realer comic book adaptation that we weren't quite seeing at the time. The Batman movies came close, but then they started going more towards the... Joel Schumacher neon color stuff and it had just been a movie I've revisited over and over again and like John with Evil Dead I have watched this movie every October 30th for at least the past 20 years it is so it good it is my Halloween tradition there was a point in time in, in high school where I watched this movie routinely um, just like I said with Army of Darkness, I, I would get out of like school and I'd come home and I'd grab my VHS and I'd put it in and I, wa- I watched The Crow. Um, I, I've gone as The Crow for Halloween. Uh, it is it is a great, great movie. That's that's why it's on my list. I absolutely love it. The story is, is so fucking good. And you're right, the performances are amazing. It's, it's to me, Ernie Hudson's greatest performance ever. The story is just so fucking heartbreaking, but relatable, and uh, it's 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 great. Yeah, there are just some scenes in there that you do not expect to see in this kind of movie that just are dramatic and uh, heartbreaking, like you said. And uh, the scene with Eric and the cop in his apartment is just it's funny and and touching at the same time. Unlike John with Evil Dead, I don't have tons of collectibles about this. Uh, the only thing I really have is the comic book collection of the original graphic novel. 
uh, the VHS tape and a couple of the DVDs they put out over the years. The VHS tape was one of the first ones my parents bought for me. They knew how much I wanted the movie. And this was when a VHS tape came out. If you wanted it, you had to spend upwards of 90 to to $100 for it from the video store. Do we remember those days? Yeah, that was early 90s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me and, and uh, me and Mike covered that in our Child's Play yeah. episode of Shutter Showdown. How those VHS tapes were ninety some dollars back then. My God. Yeah. And I don't know how much my parents paid for it, but I always assumed it was either top of the line or they managed to get like maybe a, a pre-used copy, which that was even fine for me. I didn't care if it was good. I just wanted the movie. Yeah, you got it, and that's all that mattered. Um. What was VHS then, resolution wise? Was it 240p or what uh, was it? shit? I, I think it would have been uh, 480 at least to go with the uh, television at that point. I dude, I'm not sure about that because I heard I read an article a couple of years ago that VHS was lower than standard cable television at that time. I could have sworn I heard it was in 240p. Uh, I I don't know. Yeah, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, 480 by 330. It looks like. No. Well, oh, okay. Um, yeah, you were, you were mentioning that you saw this early on. I saw this as soon as it came out on uh, VHS. It was actually a babysitter for me. This was one of those ones where my parents were going out and it was like, oh, let's get you on this movie. It actually scared me a little bit, but I, I fell in love with it. And I, I love how gothic it is. And yeah, I've been obsessed with this movie at points in time. I've I've always meant to get a crow tattoo. I just I never have. As I I've mentioned, I, I've dressed up as him for Halloween. It's just it's it's iconic. It's so good. So yeah, as a, as a number one is perfectly understandable. Fuck. And I I won't lie. A lot of my love for this movie, knowing that there are better movies out there, is firmly rooted in nostalgia. The time I saw it who i was with the people that i saw it with we all love this movie and just bringing me back to that point in my life is just as much a reason of why i love this movie as much as the quality of it well i think that could really be said with just about any fucking movie that we've listed on this list yeah, i mean come sure. on if i'm making a, an actual list do, do we really think uh, of like the 10 best movies i've ever seen fucking almost none of these movies would be on the list for me the fucking monster squad really but it's a masterpiece to me because of all of that yeah. but it's something i'm very aware of with this movie just because the people that i associate with it as much as the movie right but um this movie is fucking yeah. fantastic i mean yeah uh, the the portrayal of eric it's it's so mm -hmm. sympathetic it's so heartbreaking i mean like you mentioned that scene with him and ernie hudson and that line has always stuck with me. Everyone always says, I can't rain all the time. Fuck that. I love the line, nothing's trivial. Oh, it's mm -hmm. so good. My go-to is always, uh, buildings burn, people go away. I'm murdering the... the, the I'm, I'm paraphrasing this terribly. Buildings burn, people die. But real love is forever. But real love is forever. Yeah, yeah, full of quotable lines like that. Oh, God. And so wildly different from the comic book, but again, it holds up for what it is. Yeah, just like The Shining, it's it's not a great adaptation, but it is a great story on its own. You bringing up that quote, it, it just mm -hmm. reminded me of the ending of it. And God, it's so fucking heart wrenching. The mm -hmm. the putting the ring on the headstone and oh, fuck man. <laughs> and of course, if you know me, uh. My name is Jason Gray, and my love of the Phoenix. Anything dealing with birds, death, and rebirth always seem to come back in themes with my life. So there's a lot I have tied up in this movie. Well, just being curious real quick, what are your thoughts on, on the sequels? Um, I was very angry walking out of the second movie, and I have never seen three and four. Three's decent. Um, four is trash. Uh, I, I, I'm still a defender of part two. Uh, I know a lot of people hate it. I'm a defender. I, I really wish we were to get the, the actual ending that was intended for part two. Uh, mm -hmm. 
where you know oh god what was his name was it uh, ash was that the characters the main character's name uh i think so i was going to say vincent perez because i remembered the actor's name right. more than anything right uh where where he didn't get his vengeance but through that he saved somebody's life uh actually it was sarah's which i, I love that tie-in that she's in both of them but how he was then cursed to walk the earth forever I, mm-hmm. that's also heartbreaking but fucking fantastic oh also did you ever watch the tv series yes i did that is a good fucking show yeah if we're trying to continue the story with the eric draven character it did what it had to do yeah i mean it's not great tv but no. for what it was it was good it was a syndicated show in the late 90s it is what it is right right Oh, God, I love The Crow. Oh, speaking of which, sorry, not to just completely yep. monopolize your pick, but uh, I actually just recently got a work print of it that has uh, Skull Cowboy included. Um, so it's the, the full cut, and they actually have, like, uh, trivia tracks, basically, that'll pop up and tell you the differences and stuff like that. So I haven't yeah, watched it yet. Yeah, there was a... There was a work print on the first DVD collector's edition that was released way back. Oh, shit. Okay. I wasn't aware of that, but I'm really excited to check this out. I haven't yet, but... Cool. Yeah, the Skull Cowboy omission is probably the biggest deviation from the comic, but also really understandable, because he's just kind of there. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah, I love The Crow. I'm I'm sorry. I'm still a little broken up thinking about this whole movie. I mean, if if you just focus on uh, on the action and everything, it's fucking fantastic. But the actual story yeah. is just mm-hmm. heart wrenching. Sorry, I'm a little emotional. Go Another on. thing I noticed about it a few years ago was uh, it's a slasher movie from the slasher's point of view. When I reviewed it at one point, I tried to invert it and basically talk about eric as the villain of the movie trying to pick off the uh uh teenagers to try to paint them in that light and it was really hard to do especially with how much i enjoyed the movie but i more or less pulled it off (laughs) that's actually a great point um and i i honestly think i know they've been trying forever to remake it but i honestly think it might play a little better if they were like late teens, early twenties, the gang, I, I, that's, I yeah. just think that would add a little bit more legitimacy to it because mm-hmm. in my experience, there's not that many 30 year old gangsters. Yeah. <laughs> and I say from my experience, cause I used to work at a detention center and dealt with a lot mm-hmm. of gangsters. I, I specialized in that for years. So. Hey. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much uh, my thoughts on the crow. Hey, hey, you guys! Is it is it my turn yet? No. Shit. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Well, anyway, God, now that I um almost got put to sleep by you guys' crow masturbation circle jerk uh, conversation. I mean, we can keep um, going. It's a great movie. <laughs> I um I wanted to go last because my number one pick is a movie that. John could have probably figured it out, and uh, as soon as I say it, we're going to have a little bit of a debate about it. But um, my number one pick is none other than Army of Darkness. That really? is my number Yeah, number that's my one? number one. Yes, that's my number one movie <laughs> out of everything. Um, uh, you know, all these other movies is uh, great movies, but none of them make me happier to watch uh, than Army of Darkness. Um it's funny because earlier you guys had a quick conversation about theatrical versus director's cut. And John, you and I have had plenty of conversations about the theatrical version of Army of Darkness versus d- director's cut of this. You are a fan of the director's cut, while I am a fan, bigger fan, of the theatrical version. Theatrical. <laughs> it's theatrical. Just, just theatrical. So you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um,. I don't know. I, it's it's a great movie. It's only 81 minutes long. The superior version, that is. <laughs> there, I'll call it the superior instead of theatrical. Okay, how about that? Um, 
Yeah, it, it's it's it has every element that I was looking for in a movie at that time. I think I was coming off of you know the high that I was getting from movies such as Freddy vs. Jason at that time, which by the way, it wasn't in my top ten be just because the only things I like about that movie are Freddy and Jason. I fucking hate the other characters. I don't find them enjoyable. So because of that, it's not in my top 10. However, um, the very first time I watched Army of Darkness was not until 2006. Um, wow. It was, Shit, yeah. Man. I was I was in my teens when I saw Army of Darkness, but I knew around about what it was going to be. I knew it was part of the Evil Dead franchise, but I knew it was more laid back and comedic and cheesy. Um, I watched it and I just felt it was like the most feel good horror action comedy that I've seen up to that point. And you know how a lot of movies, how we were talking about this earlier with Wonder Woman, but a lot of movies fall a little bit in their third act. I don't feel like Army of Darkness is that. I don't feel like it does that. Um, you get a lot of the slapstick humor in the first half of the film. You get a lot of the gimmicks, a lot of the gags. But at the end of the movie, you get this fucking huge, like, low-budget version of Lord of the Rings fighting style, at, you know, fight scene at the end of the movie. And um, it's, it's fucking great. And I like the theoretical version because I think it has a much better ending. And, John, I don't know if you prefer the director's cut apocalypse ending or or what oh you don't remember oh my god this was one of the first conversations we had and i still remember it because i've been saying this forever i think they've missed such an opportunity with this um in fact i'm i'm actually really tempted uh i actually want to make my own edition of army of darkness because you're right. I, um, I do prefer the director's cut, but there are there are elements of the theatrical cut. But that's how you say it. Um, yeah. The that, superior cut. That uh, I enjoy more. Like, uh, that there are certain one-liners and things like that. But when it comes to the ending, if you have to choose, like, if you just put a gun to my head and say, hey, you got to choose one of these, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the superior uh one uh just because it's more fun and it fits the tone and everything but i actually think they should play together i think that we should see ash go to the cave and take the drops we we get him counting we get a hard cut we get the whole theatrical ending all right we black out maybe show the title again army of darkness and mm-hmm. then bring it back up where it's Ash coming to in the cave. And that was all his dream while he was asleep the entire time. And give us give us both endings because it works that way. Ash is a fuck up. And of course he's going to dream that he is this yeah. super version of Ash. And I I just think that's, that's the best ending for it. That does make a lot of sense. Um, both endings do work towards his, his character. Because he is a fuck up. It's just... The director's cut ending is a little bit more of a Debbie Downer ending and the theatrical <laughs> version. Did I say it right that time or no. I keep fucking up? Um, the, <laughs> the superior ending is very, is very, um, it's very uplifting and that it kind of fits within the whole uh, spirit of the entire film. Um, I do agree with you, though. There's a lot of stuff of the, of the director's cut that I wish was left in the theatrical version. Um, the, uh, the tiny ash scene. Why did they not just leave the whole version of that in in the theatrical version? You know what I mean? Like, what what is the problem with it? It's cut down. It has music in in the theatrical and the director's cut. It's no music in the background. I actually liked it better that way. It was funnier, I think, that way. So yes, there is definitely a lot about the director's cut that I do like. So you're right. If we if someone made a supercut, don't let Mike do it because the audio will be out of sync. But uh, if you, if we, if someone makes a supercut of Army of Darkness, and they put in the good dialogue from the theatrical, and but have a lot of the extended stuff from the director's cut, and then, and seeing this is the part I think me and you will disagree on uh, the way that the final battle scene, it, I think it's edited a little bit poorly in the director's cut, which with how late Henry and his men come to save the day and help them at the at, at on the director's cut, I. I just like it. The placement is better in the theatrical, but that's neither here nor there. 
Um, yeah, Supercut. That's what I think uh, there should be of Army of Darkness. And you're right, it would definitely be a better movie with less flaws that both theatrical and the director's cut have of the movie. Don't even get me started on the international cut. I don't even talk about that. I don't think I've ever even seen that one. I, I own it, obviously, but I, I don't think I've ever seen it. It's 83 minutes long, I believe, and it's it's got the dumbest, weirdest cuts in it. <laughs> if, yeah, it, like the tiny Ash scene, it's cut in such a way where it almost doesn't even make sense. <laughs> and then there's there's some extended dialogue scenes from the director's cut, but then the final battle scene is edited down even more so than the theatrical version is. Oh, so weird. it's it's definitely really weird. I think I saw Evil Dead 2 first, then Army of Darkness, then the original. So I saw that series in no sensible order. Um, I have the Shout Factory release that came out a number of years ago, which I think has the three different cuts. It does, yes. And I've seen them all at some point, but they all kind of blur together at this point. Right. I lean a little bit more towards the director's cut, just because I do like the uh, uh, sent too far into the future ending but like you said there are a lot of elements that make more sense in the director's cut uh, the the theatrical cut and you know it could just be that i seen the theatrical first yeah it, it yeah. could it could just be that because when i finally watched the director's cut i did i and i do i really enjoy that cut i just think the pacing on direct the director's cut is a little off um but again that's probably just because i'm used to the quick breakneck pace of yeah. the theatrical so probably it, it comes right down to that i've seen the theatrical first and that's pre- pretty much what it comes down to i think it's interesting that you guys are talking about when you saw it and for me uh I think this was the very first of the Evil Dead films I saw because it got played on cable a lot. And I didn't even know. Sci-fi channel. Yeah. I I didn't even know it was part of the Evil Dead franchise. It was just this goofy movie I I saw a bunch as a kid. And then as I got older and internet was a thing, I I found out about Evil Dead and I watched that. And then I watched part two and I found out it's like, oh, there's a part three. And I watched and it's like, wait, this is that movie I used to watch on cable as a kid. And yeah, I've, I've just, I've fallen in love with it too. It is, it is easily my second favorite Evil Dead. It is so good. It is so fun. And you're, you're right. It, it's just, it's a great time. Uh, it's, it's action, horror, comedy. And uh, to me, it's probably my favorite action, horror, comedy or horror, comedy or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's got a little bit of everything in it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, there was a point in time where... That, that was like my comfort. I, I was in a really bad spot. Work sucked, all that. But I could come home. I could make some fucking popcorn. And I could watch fucking Army of Darkness. And you know what? I still like doing that from time to time. And it freaks my wife out. But we'll watch it. And I can still almost say all of Bruce Campbell's lines along with him. <laughs> Wait, what freaks your wife out? That, that I know it that well that it'll be playing. Oh. And even the toss away lines like, yeah, yeah, get the fuck out of my face. I can't say I'm all perfectly now, but I can say a lot of them. There was a point in time where I was watching it every day that literally I said every one of his lines the whole way through the movie. I was just so yeah. into it, but that was part of the experience. It was just... It's definitely very quotable. Um, I, You guys were talking about family horror earlier when you were talking about Monster Squad. I like this movie because even though it's rated R, I could show this movie to anybody. Yeah. You know, I most of my friends let their kids watch R-rated films, depending on what it is. And it's like Army of Darkness. I can show that to anyone. Absolutely. It's got like one F-bomb in it. And it, it, it the only gore it has in it is really cheesy and over the top and not offensive. So, I, you know, it's to me, it's it's it put me in such a good mood when I watched it. But yet I felt like I watched something that I was looking for. Because, again, I, I was 2006, I think I was, like, 19, and I was looking for something, you know, horrifying with monsters in it and whatnot. But, holy shit, that movie put me in a good mood. But yet it was a horror movie. So, I don't know. It was fun, and it stuck with me ever since. And you guys were talking about how you watch, a tr- like, traditional movies that you watch on Halloween. I watch Army of Darkness every year on my birthday. Nice. Uh, just because, you know... It is something that puts me in such a good mood, so I, I watch it on my birthday. So, yep, Army of Darkness, number one in my heart, baby. It is a great comfort food movie. You just put it in, have a great time. Yeah. 
Jason, will you come over and watch it with me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Uh, I've said that Evil Dead is my tradition. That's simply because in my life now, I don't have the time. But for quite a few of those years that I've said, you know, two decades now, it was all three of them. And, you know, I, I love this movie. It, it, it is a great movie. And, yeah, I have no fault with it being on your list, let alone with it being number one. It, it is, it's fantastic. Um, it's just such yeah. a fun time. Did um, I can't remember if I said this on an episode in the past, but have I ever told you guys that my least favorite Evil Dead movie is actually Evil Dead 2? Mine too. <laughs> I think I said that. Yeah. It's, it's oh, oh my God, it's just, uh, I'll get on it in the next episode. But yes, Evil Dead 2 is my, the weak link, in my opinion. So the only good thing about Evil Dead 2 is the setup for Army of Darkness. Uh, there, I said it. I, <laughs> I give it a little bit more credit than that, but it is my least favorite of anything Evil Dead, so. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I so mean, guys, a little bit more towards liking Evil Dead 2 just because I saw it first. So in my head, it's the original Right. Even though it's not, and because it covers so much of the same ground as the the first Evil Dead. Right, right. No, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it, I'm sorry, it, it it does, but it doesn't. It just doesn't have that same impact as the first one has. You know, it, yeah. Well, John, would you agree with me that one of the big reasons why the original Evil Dead is such an amazing movie is because it, it starts off as a roller coaster ride and does not stop until the very end like the very bitter quick paced death defying end. it doesn't cut away to a different set of characters nothing like that it just starts on a slow burn and you're sweating you're sweating your ass off by the end of that movie i i mean yeah you're right with the roller coaster it's just like you you're going up that peak and then you know you hit what the second act and the rest of the films that drop the tension it builds and yeah it's it's fantastic i don't think it gets near enough credit that it deserves in all honesty too many people are distracted by its limitations because of its budget but if you can overlook that it's such a good movie i mean it's my fucking number one so yeah yeah (laughs) it just it doesn't have that many it does have a lot of flaws but like the, the, the pros of that movie outweigh the cons, in, in my opinion. And it, to me, it's like the older it gets and the more and more years that goes by, you show someone that movie for the first time and they're not going to expect how intense that movie gets by the end of it. No. And they might be shocked by the end of that. Like, holy shit, what the, the fuck did I just watch? I just watched a girl get raped by a tree. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Claymation, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, guys. This has been a lot of fun. We ran through our top 10 movies. Is there anything that we want to say before we wrap up this very long but very fun and sweaty episode of Movie Misfits? <laughs> uh, just real quick, I, I know we've all said that we have the, uh, the Screen Factory edition of Army of Darkness. I just want to put this out there. If you do not have Blu-ray capacity, um, you, you need to. But uh, there is a edition out there on DVD called the boomstick edition and it is phenomenal i still think it might be my favorite edition ever put out of army of darkness just because of all the features that it has and and just everything you can do like you can watch that one uh director theatrical whichever cut you want i think it just has those two but you can watch either of those cuts with the commentary and then it'll have like it has the option of like a trivia track throughout it where it's telling you different things about the filming. It is, it's so immersive. It's so well done. And that's the thing about Evil Dead. Almost all of them have such great additions and so many out there that it's, it's, it's almost overwhelming. You know, it's interesting that you say that because I'm sorry, Jason, I'll let you go in just a second. But then again, you guys, you know, uh, outshouted me for quite a while earlier. Anyway, um, my the only two editions I have of Army of Darkness is the Screwhead edition and then the Scream Factory um, Collector's edition. The reason why I bring this up is because the Screwhead edition actually has a totally different transfer of the theatrical than than uh, the Collector's edition does from uh, Scream Factory. And the reason why I bring this up, John, is because the Scream Factory edition the colors are very very bland. When I go to watch this movie. 
I actually don't watch any physical media version of it all. I watch the transfer that's on Amazon Prime because it's colorful, it's bright, and I believe it's from the transfer from the Screwhead uh, edition. Um, and a lot of people don't like it because they say it has unnatural colors, but I actually really like the more colorful, bright uh, version of it compared to Scream Factory's very bland and drawn out uh, of, uh, of that collector's edition version. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen the Screwhead edition, but I imagine it's, it's probably got the, the same transfer quality as the, the Boomstick one, so... I think I heard that it did. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, that's an episode, I believe. Yeah, I think so, yeah. God, Jason, hey, do I make a good co-host, Jason? <laughs> yes. Who would you rate me? Uh, four stars. I Out of only five, I hope? Uh, out, out of 20. I hate you. <laughs> John, it's been an honor. My ass and balls are so fucking sweaty right now. Yeah, yeah. It's only going to get worse, guys. Summer has just oh, begun. that's right. <laughs> yeah, we're only in fucking... We're at the beginning of the summer, beginning of hell. Yeah. The very beginning of our 69-episode run for season one. <laughs> <of> movie <laughs> Mystics. <laughs> guys, it has been a pleasure. Everyone, you have been listening to Movie Misfits, episode two, I believe. Yes, it is episode deuce. Yeah, yep. For Jason Gray, for John Rhodes, who's shirtless currently. I'm, of course, Cripple Cody, and we will see you on the next episode. We belong dead. Oh, God. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. Give me a break. And I'm back. And my chair is actually soaking wet. You. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jason, you ain't gonna kick my fucking ass over this, are you? No. Well, guys, it's past my bedtime, so I'm gonna jump my crippled ass off of here. All right, guys. Have a good one. Later. Yep. Bye. See ya. Bye. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.